Hi, Mia. I'm so Hello. happy to have you here with me today. We have Mia Vasallo. And Mia is a uh, founder and director of Set CV Capital and Consulting, um, based in Melbourne, Australia. And she works on a high level transactions across Australia, the Middle East, and Europe. Um, and she started her career in capital um, in her early early 20s as an intern in venture capital in Australia, where she helped uh, raising millions uh, uh, for different Australian startups. And um, yeah, so welcome, Mia. I'm so happy that you're here today. Um, you are, so like I just said, you're based in Australia, but you are actually currently visiting Barcelona. <laughs> I am, yeah, yeah. it's lovely. Uh, so throughout COVID-19, the Australian borders have been closed. So anyone that's had to travel has had to get a government exemption. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been very um, fortunate in that I've actually been granted more than one. I've, I've been out of the country a couple of times now. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been allowed to travel, which is really nice. Um, and as you know, really uh, throughout the pandemic has really been um, a godsend, to, to, to be honest. Um, so essentially to, to, to get an exemption, I had to prove to the Australian government that um, me leaving Australia and travelling was um, economically better and better for Australia than um, me potentially bringing back COVID. So it's it's really um, uh, impactful to know um, that uh, that obviously what what I'm doing is is good for for the Australian economy as as well yeah. and and uh, and is having a positive impact. Yeah. That's great. And you have been traveling a lot. You were just telling me how you've <laughs> the last couple of months, you've been all over the place. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's, that's great that that's possible for you. Yeah, exactly. And so um, I also wanted to let people know, um, people who are watching this, the, um, the way that you and I met, um, <laughs> because we met during um, what is called the Working Women Week of Barcelona. It's a full week uh, of different um, activities, workshops, uh, roundtables that are organized here in Barcelona for women and, you know, especially focused on their career. And you actually did a workshop there called Ask for or How to Ask for Money, yes. uh, which I attended. <laughs> and we later met at the, at the end, there was an after party and um, I attended that because I had also participated in a round table as a filmmaker. Um, so we met each other at that very last party. And I wanted to share something with you, which I don't know if I told you. And that is, so when I saw you at the party, uh, it struck me that you were very tall. First of all, you can't see that on a Zoom call, <laughs> but I can tell everyone now, Mia is very tall. <laughs> She's very <laughs> tall. She's obviously very beautiful. You're quite young for what, you, what you're doing, what you've accomplished in your life. And so all of this together, it immediately made me think about um, all these prejudices or all these prejudices uh, against women that are very beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, because we tend to think that beautiful women like supermodels or actresses or anyone that's, you know, like has, um, uh, yeah, that, that uh, tall, beautiful look, that they are only that. Okay, okay. that they cannot be both beautiful and intelligent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to ask you about that. If mm -hmm. you have ever experienced that in that world, because you are in such a different world and such a male dominated world, really, um, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to your, to your work. So have you ever experienced that in, in any way? Yeah. First of all, I'm incredibly flattered that you just likened me to a supermodel. Maybe that's just what I heard <laughs> that, but. <laughs> no, well, but you I'm, did I'm look spectacular yeah. that evening. Uh, you know, you were Thank all dressed you. up and makeup <laughs> and high heels, and even taller. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, unfortunately um, I, I have on multiple occasions, which is really um, I think particularly in this day and age is really disheartening. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in situations where I was in a meeting with with someone, and they've straight out said to me, "Look, Mia, you're a very nice, pretty girl, but I'm sure no one's ever going to want to do business with you." Yeah. <laughs> 
I have had um, uh, general managers of, of businesses grope me at, at Christmas parties and things like that, um, which is just, it's just so vile. And I, um, part of the reason I went out on my own and, and started my own business was basically because I kept coming up against things like this. Yeah. Um, and I just had enough. And I thought this is, A, this isn't right. B, why am I, I, if I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to deal with people like this. And so I work on my own terms now. I have my own business if, and I will very um, abruptly or very blankly say, look, I I don't think this is the right working relationship for me. Thank you very much. Hmm. Um, If, if I am ever feeling that it is not the absolute best situation for me to be in. Um, and there, unfortunately it happens more often than, than people think. Um, even more so than that, I, uh, actually, while I've been traveling, I've had it as well. I was, um, I had come over to, I was in Bahrain and Barcelona for some work in March. And then, um, I was traveling back to Australia and I was stopped by, um, Australian customs and, and border force who basically, stopped me, pulled me over, went through all my bags and, you know, took everything out um, and was going through it and asked. They detained me and questioned me for three, almost four hours. Um, wow. And, like, went through my entire work history. What was your first job? Went through every single job I've ever had in my life. And how did you meet this person? How did you get this opportunity? Blah, 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 blah. And essentially they said, look, We're trying to determine either if you are a sex worker or if you are trafficking drugs because you do not fit the model of what someone in your position does. (laughs) I I, I was like, excuse me? So just because I am a female in early 30s who likes to dress well or what have you, I am automatically, um, you know, categorised as, two things, which I was just absolutely flabbergasted at. And I was like, well, here's all my emails. Here's, you know, the documentation I had to show the government to get out of the country of the people I was meeting with and the names of the people. And these are the meeting notes and my website. And they still detained me and questioned me and for like like strip search, everything. And I just, I was just, that's, that was the fear. (laughs) I mean, okay. So, 2021 and yeah. uh, a, a woman that walks through the airport dressing mm-hmm. nicely tall yeah. beautiful girl is more likely to be a sex worker than working in finance yeah all right <laughs> now, Just like, how in case somebody that? thinks that we haven't reached uh <laughs> equality yet yeah, isn't wow. that true yeah yeah and i was just Absolutely disgusted. I ended up writing to um, the Minister for Women at both the state and federal level and also my local local, uh, member as well back back in government in Australia and just said, this is is not right. No. Um, And and I still, I don't understand when there is so much happening in terms of promoting equality and women's equal rights. And I feel like we've gotten so far yeah. for something like that to still happen to someone. It's just shocking to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's uh, on many levels, there's a, a lack of um, awareness, information, education as well. And mm-hmm. in, in mm-hmm. regards to um, the whole gender issue, I actually just, Uh, recorded another conversation with a female um, film director from Argentina and she was explaining me something very very interesting that um, I didn't know that they made some new laws in Argentina which um, actually forces companies to educate their employees about gender violence uh, because Amazing. it's just such a big thing and you know how to um, deal with it how to also see maybe the red flags and you know some of the things that can be happening in people's lives so to be able to detect uh, when it's going on and what's going on also this whole thing of you know like men stalking women or waiting mm. for them outside of work and things like that like understanding how to deal with it and mm-hmm. I think that's wonderful. You know, I think that's something that we need. Yeah, it is. 
right? It should but, be done more, I yeah. think, in lots of other countries as well. Yeah, and have more sensibility around it. And, and mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, <laughs> must be awful for you to go through that experience. And, and also it's just like, the little things, the little details. I remember um, once when I, I was a lot younger and I was visiting some friends in, in Portugal and um, these were friends of mine from when I went to film school in Denmark and we were out partying and, and they would introduce me to some of their friends um, and they just introduced me, you know, with my name and saying that they had gone to film school with me. And these guys just immediately assumed that I was an actress mm-hmm. or a mo- like model slash actress. And they, oh, OK, so you're an actress. And, how, you know, it's not like it's not an insult, obviously. Um, but it was for me, it was such a weird thing that that their perception of me immediately, like seeing a girl mm-hmm. that you were an actress you could not I couldn't have been a a director of photography or a director or a producer or anything Mm -hmm. else um yeah I I think it's the it's the perception as well as the the conditioning like maybe they haven't been exposed to women in those Mm. roles or it's not so like it's not so widely adopted that that they ask you oh so what do you do in film because they think you could be doing anything. Yeah. It's that they've only their only experience and all they've ever seen is women as actresses. So yeah. that's all they think is possible, yeah. which is just sad. Yeah. And I mean, really I think it's, it's probably <laughs> less like that now. You know, we're, we are starting to get more and more. I mean, we see now more and more women in, in your mm-hmm. world, in my world, in the film industry, mm-hmm. and we're getting more and more used to it. But it's still like a very slow process. It is. Um, and, and talking about slow processes, I was actually just reading um, before you got on here, I was looking through an article um, from Forbes, and it said, so this is uh, regarding or in relation to, to your world, It says here that it wasn't until the Equal Credit Opportunity Act of 1974 that federal law outlawed credit transaction discrimination based on race, color, religion, national origin, sex, material status, or age. So 50 years after the women got their rights to vote. Mm -hmm. So up until then, women pretty much could not take out a credit. They couldn't have credit cards. They couldn't anything without their husbands. And we're mm-hmm. talking 50 years since we actually got the, the rights to vote, which was, mm-hmm. uh, well, I, I'm talking about the States now, right? So yeah, I'm not sure about each country in the world, but in the States, it was in 1920. So mm-hmm. that just proves how long um, change really takes, takes, right? Doesn't it? It really does. And um you know, thing, every, everything from loans and, and, and credit to owning property to, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think it's just really set women back even further. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in terms of building their own independent wealth, you know, a, apart from their husbands and, and, and things like that, or even have, being able to have the independence to go out and do that on your own, yeah. um, you know, regardless of whether you're married or not. Yeah. So it's quite, it's definitely taken a long time for change. And do you see that in your work, like when you're working with women Um, uh, and men? Is there a big difference? So there is is very much a difference between the amount of men that I work with versus women. Yeah. I think of all of the projects I'm working on at the moment. Um, So there are different pillars of my business. There is tech and startups, emerging and sustainable technologies um, and property. Can um, I interrupt you, Mia, and then ask you to explain us, first of all, really what it is you do? Because I think we never really, yeah, for never sure. really talked about that, so <laughs> just so people understand. Um, yeah, for sure. So I um, raise capital uh, for businesses either in Australia or overseas, um, either via debt or equity. So I either find you investors or I find you a, a loan um, with the view to help expand so either in um, tech startups or everything from different types of apps um, or products um, to, you know, I'm doing a lot in sustainable, clean energy. 
energy at the moment, which is really exciting. And then I also do do property as well. So everything from farms, golf courses, major high rises in Australia, hotels, you you, you name it. Um, so I think of or all of the different projects I'm working on, there is only one tech startup that has um, that's a partnership that is one male, one female. Otherwise, mm-hmm. they are all male founded at the moment. And yeah. I specifically try to find ones where I'm working with women. Yeah. Um, in sustainable and new technologies, I'm not working with any female founded ones at the moment. And as I said, I'm constantly looking for them. And in property, yeah. um, of all the projects I'm working on, there are two. Wow. Um, two property projects that have females. And so my my whole business was founded on the basis of I come from a line of, of strong women. Mm. Z stands for Zanon, which was um, my late grandmother's last name. Um, C is for Caliga, my mum's maiden name, and Vasallo is my maiden name, so ZCV. Oh, and so nice. my nonna um, immigrated to Australia after World War II. Um, she was one of the first seamstresses for United Colours of Benetton, um, and she went to Australia and started moved to this little country town called Broken Hill. It was a mining town literally in the desert in the middle of Australia with nothing, and she was a dressmaker, so started her own business. And so I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit um, sort of ingrained in me from, from my heritage. When they moved to Adelaide, my mum always had her own businesses as well, and that was just normal to me growing up so my whole business is is built on um helping and and finding women yeah um and unfortunately even though that is who I am that is what I promote that is still very hard um and I'm and and I don't know whether it's a culture or, or, or what but there seems to be less um less females doing things than, than, than men, hmm. um, which is, you know, so sad as, as well. Um, and, or maybe it's just, it's just the deal flow, the opportunities that, that I've been exposed to or, or that I've had, but, um, but that it's definitely ha- having a very large male to female ratio is unfortunately normal. Yeah. And I think also, you know, what, what we were just talking about now that change it does actually take a long time. It's not something that happens uh, from one year to the other. Um, mm. And I, when I think about just my own family, um, my grandfather was a businessman, okay? Mm-hmm. And he was making a lot of money. And my grandmother was, you know, a stay-at-home, stay-at-home mom, mm-hmm. a housewife. And I know that she wanted to, at some point, take some language courses And he Mm -hmm. wouldn't let her, he would not allow her, (laughs) he would not allow her to get education, to expand, you know, no. And at some point they, um, I'm actually not sure if they got a a divorce, but they were separated and moved, you know, to, well, she moved to a a different house, Um, but he was still taking care of her because she couldn't. You know, she didn't, she never had an education. She had never been allowed for an education, Mm -hmm. um, therefore couldn't have a job. Um, At that point was also uh, older. She was older, Mm -hmm. but, but still unable really to, to take care of yourself. And we're talking about just, that was my grandmother, you know? So how has that pattern influenced my mother Mm -hmm. uh, and what she has seen? Mm-hmm. And then how has that influenced me? So it's really just three de- generations. It's it's very little. It's very close. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not like, oh, this is hundreds of years ago. No, no, it's, it's very close. It's something that you can remember. It's something that yes. you have actually seen. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to sort of fight against that and change that. Mm-hmm. Although it's almost like a, I sometimes talk about an indoctrination by society because it really is on, on so many levels. Um, it, it's when you're living in a society and in a certain culture and you've been told a certain thing since you were a child, you know, and mm-hmm. it comes from everything. It comes from uh, just, you know, from the toy that you're supposed to play with and the colors you're supposed to dress up in pink when you're a girl mm-hmm. and all these things that like society is just constantly putting into your mind. And at some point, kind of 
you know, stop and want to reflect about it and want to think about it. And then maybe you, you start wanting to change things. It's really hard to work against these things. It is, yeah. And it takes, I think, a conscious, really conscious choice and effort because mm. mm. um, otherwise it would be so easy just to continue to do exactly what, what you've seen and, and, and what you've been conditioned to. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think there has to be something very conscious. It's a very conscious choice when you want to to make a change. Otherwise, that, mm-hmm. otherwise that change is not going to happen. It, it, that's funny you say that because um, I do feel that I've always at heart been a, a feminist, but I probably didn't really know that I was a feminist until mm-hmm. I got older. And it wasn't only, I, I would say it's probably uh, maybe five years ago, something like that, that I started to get really conscious, but about my own work. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I started reflecting about my own work and I realized that, that I was only, when I was writing stories or writing scripts or telling stories for my movies, all of my main characters were men. Yeah. I would only write about men. And it was just so natural for me to start on a new page and go he or you know with a male name Mm -hmm. and then I and then I like you say I took that conscious choice and I said no that that doesn't make any sense I'm doing that because that's what I've seen on the big screen always Mm -hmm. you know I've seen these um uh male heroes uh men Mm -hmm. that go out in the world to change the world or to save the princess or you know whatever the story is and so you're inspired by that and you continue writing in that same pattern Mm -hmm. and then I said to myself no I don't want to do that anymore (laughs) right It, it makes so much sense to write about women because I am a woman I will understand her better Mm -hmm. yep and so I did that and it's not to say that I'm never going to make a film again about a man because of course I, I want to write stories about men too but I felt like I needed to to do several projects and hmm. put my focus on projects with and about women. And I can imagine even from just purely like a creative exercise point of view that it's really good for you to write about both. Yeah. You know, exactly. just to explore the creativity of it. So even for no other purpose than that, it's, it's good to explore both. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, even like, but having a, a really strong conscious choice, I think, is a really um, connectful way to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like you say that you, you're conscious about trying to reach out, not just saying one thing, one thing is saying like, I'm open to all genders and Mm -hmm. diversity. And, and another thing is to actually take a conscious choice and go after, go after it and try to search for that. Right. Because that's a whole different thing. It is. Um, And I think a lot of companies will have this kind of policy or uh, they will openly speak about oh we're so much for diversity but then they don't take any action towards it I don't to take any real steps towards that yeah. I, right. I think that's fair I did some um, some research earlier this year with um, with an Australian government agency about women in managerial positions and um, there were some really really interesting findings about um how to instigate change and how to, um, you know, what would be the the recommendations in order to uh, make, you know, uh, women in, make it more equal for the amount of women in managerial positions in different Mm -hmm. organisations. And uh, and one of the things that um, was found was having like a, having a, a certain percentage that, that, that they have to meet. So, for example, um, there was found that uh, in one type of organisation um, they had only just had a female board member, mm. um, but there had never been a, a wim- woman at that level before, and that was only this year. Um, I'm being very careful. I can't say the organisation. No, that's okay. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, that's okay. But, you know, they, they'd only just had um, their first female in, in one type of organisation. In another type of organisation, um, they had just had their first female chairman. Um, and to think for, for so long, um, 
that that this this is only just happening in in 2021 how, how do we um speed up the change how, how do we make it quicker and so for that part of research we actually recommended basically having having percentages you know they have to be 30 percent of board seats um uh, held by women you know and and having over the next five years any board seats that do come up there has to be an active push towards that 30 percent mark um and you know you, you receive um feedback like well what if it's not the best person for the job <laughs> completely understand that it may not be the best person for the job but the only way you're going to make change is if you actually go in there and do it exactly um yeah. so it's 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 trickier but um and you know you've got to of course be open and receptive to all feedback but exactly as you say you've got to be willing to go out and look and find the people and, and do the work and, and put them in those positions so that they can continue to make the right change yeah yeah. No, it, it, and it's very similar. Actually, what you just explained now, I uh, can completely relate to uh, in the film industry because they're doing very much the same, um, trying to, with quotes or with percentages, uh, mm -hmm. for example, in film festivals or uh, when we talk about um, funds, like when you're trying to apply for funds for your films, uh, your mm -hmm. budget, things like that, um, they are trying to, in, in some places to... Um, demand a certain percentage uh, yeah. it has to be female directors or written by women and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and again, you hear that same comment like, yeah, but what if the, you know, what if the film is not good enough or what if the, that's mm -hmm. not the right film that should have gone into the festival? Yeah. But you know what? I think we are in, first of all, I don't, I don't really believe in that. Like what if the film is not good enough? I think it's more about these, kind of biases that we all have that we all you know as a man you will relate to other things mm. and as a woman you will probably relate to to different things so if you have an all-female board jury you'll probably choose different films than if you have an all-male jury yeah. right so so it's also sometimes just about matter of what you like what speaks to you what you can yeah. relate to right mm -hmm. what you can what you can sympathize with yeah and that's why it's so important actually to have uh, both female, but also of different cultures and yeah. origins Just have on the screen. In general. Yeah. yeah, to to, to, yeah, to on and have off. a role model, right? And then, so I think once, so where there, there was an interesting saying that, that that I've heard. It's like they're okay for us to play the sport, but now we've got to figure out how to coach it, yeah. or like now we've got to be allowed how to coach. So, for example, like where now you know if if there's diversity, um, uh, let's say on screen. Amazing. So now we've got to get diverse, diversity into the managerial positions of the people that choose to make that change. Because then, as you say, if diversity is really fully represented, then the decisions that are going to be made are actually going to be more reflective of people in general. Yeah. Because people like we're, we're a diverse world. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's not enough to just put, again, I can only speak for my industry. It's not enough to just put more women in uh as main characters in films mm -hmm. so we have more women on the screen or we have more women of color or we have um uh, transgender people or anyone from a minority group on the screen so they can mm -hmm. see reflect themselves no it's also important that we have more of those people behind the camera and in position in positions of decision and power and being mm -hmm. uh, the ones that give out budgets and money and because mm -hmm. then it all comes together and then yeah. that's where the change is um yeah. i feel True. at least and yeah. i guess it's exactly the same in your in your business in your world yeah very much so yeah. so um you know and i'm always attending things like like women working week um mm -hmm. and uh and trying to to find more and more women that are doing that are doing different things. I'm always, you know, accessible on social media and, and via email and, and all that sort of thing because um, I want to connect with with women like this and I, and I want to understand what what they're doing and and what projects they're working on and and why and um, because if someone is super passionate about something, they will succeed. Mm. Doesn't doesn't matter if they're male, female, what their background is, where they're from. If they are, if they have like a authentic connection and drive, as long as they are open to feedback, mm -hmm. they'll they'll make something happen. 
Wow, that's that's so nice to hear. That's so inspiring and and motivating. That's it's your true. experience. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, you know. Um, so I'm I'm always really looking to to connect and and understand more and and um and also because generally they're doing really great things. Um, I just Do don't think there's, there's enough out there. Do you think that also maybe it can be or maybe it can be something with the fear, like the fear of failure? I mean, for women to go into that type of business that you are in um, and definitely. the fear of those like really big budgets. Yeah, I think it's definitely intimidating um, and it can be daunting very much so, mm -hmm. you know, particularly if you pick up a budget and suddenly it's not just a million dollars, but you're looking at something that's a billion dollars. That's also another <laughs> yeah, <okay. well. laughs> moment, you know, yeah. but uh I think then, you know, I'm sure that male or female, whoever first picked up a budget and looked at it like that was like, shit, that's a lot of money, not, oh, wow, this is a lot of money for me mm. to be looking at. So that's just always my point of view is rather than trying to look at it from a this is a lot of money for me, just this is a lot of money in general. Yeah. Which in actual fact, you know, when you think about how much money there is in the world, it's not really that much anyway. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> no, but, but, no, but, do, but do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's always, uh, you know, the more, you know, when I, when I pick up a budget, you know, I picked up something the other day, it's $1.2 billion and you're like, okay, cool. That's a lot of money. When you think about how much money there is in the world, you know, if it's just that mindset of, well, actually it's not that much money. It's not that big yeah. a deal. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, but there is very much a disparity and, and, uh, a sh you know, a change in, um, what, what opportunities that perhaps women previously have, have been given in, in terms of, and currently as well, in terms of the budgets that, that they're given or the things mm. that they're able to look at. I use that as my point of view, because then I don't feel so daunted about it. I don't feel so intimidated by it. Um, and I think that, if I'm not intimidated, like my uh, my whole thing is that if I'm intimidated by something or if I'm scared about it, everyone else in the room will know. Yeah. So as long as I don't think it's a big deal and everyone's going to be like, she really doesn't think this is a big deal. All right. Cool. She's, yeah. she's done this before. Like, you know, she's she's got this. So that's always my, my um, perspective and, and my approach to things like that because, yeah. And where do you think you got that confidence from? Is that from your mother and your grandmother growing up um, with them? I'd say so, yeah. I, I did a lot, a lot of um, personal uh, development and growth work early in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I've always just been a bit gutsy in terms of taking things on and, and, um, and determination and really just having a go. Um, you know, the, the absolute worst thing is, is that it doesn't work out, but I would rather try and, and know than, than have that fear of, um, fear of failure or, um, I'll, I'll be so intimidated that, that I am unable to do something. Mm. And when did you, when did you have the idea of opening your own business and, and yeah, so, um, I was kind of already working in the space in a freelance capacity um, mm. when a couple of years ago, it was probably only 2019, um, I, I was in a meeting and someone literally said to me, Mia, you're, I, I had been working at this particular place for four days and, um, and the managing partner looked at me, he's like, Mia, you're a lovely girl, you're very nice, you're very pretty, but no one's ever really going to want to do business with you. And so basically <laughs> had put me in this this very small office where no one would ever see me, where I was most likely just going to be doing admin work. Um, and I thought, this is not, not what I signed up for at all. So I only worked there for four days. I said, look, uh, thank you very much. But I, I handed in my resignation. I left and never went back. Really? Wow. Uh, and Good pretty much left that day and just went, no, nah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not having that. And uh, decided to, to set up my own business and, and do it properly and just went, ran and went for it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And how old were you at that time? 29, 29, 28, yeah. 29. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm 31 now, which is still 
very young in this industry, yeah. you know, and I don't claim to be, um, you know, I'm a master of it at all. I'm I'm still learning as everyone does as at everyone. every stage. Hmm. But um, I think that maybe because I am maybe a bit younger, maybe some would call me naive, but I think I am just not maybe conditioned to, to the industry mm. as much, which is nice. So I just look at it with a different perspective, yeah. which I guess is refreshing to some. Maybe it seems silly to others. Um, but, I mean, it, it's it's working so far. Yeah. And it's uh, that's um, interesting that you say that because you're kind of coming back to, again, talking about the whole mindset of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so often when we talk about money and budget and and also this you know fear of failure and it's really all about the mindset and Mm -hmm. and your own history what history or what story you want to tell about yourself and what you can do right Mm -hmm. I, I remember I was um talking to also a woman who does a lot of um consulting around money and um and your own finances. Um, mm-hmm. And she's talking about the, the story of your money or the story you have with money. And mm-hmm. for example, I'll share like my own um, personal feelings around it. I realize that my story of money is a little bit of fear. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid to not have money. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm afraid to all of a sudden be without money. And mm-hmm. I know that that fear comes because I grew up with my mom. She was a single mom since I was two years old. Um, And although her parents had money, um, that didn't really mean anything to her. And when we were growing up, because she was pretty much taking care of me Mm -hmm. and and living in, you know, a decent side house and had a lot of bills and a lot of things to take care of. And so she very had very much fear of not having enough money to be able to take care of me. And I know that, that the, the talk of constantly of, you know, will I have enough money? And, and also um, telling me don't ever take out loans, you know, for Mm -hmm. me in my house, loans was like a big, no, 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 no. Because how are you ever going to pay it back? Don't ever buy anything, you know, unless you have the money already on your bank account. And also, so thinking about going to university was instead of my mom has always been very supportive of me and in in everything I wanted to do also career wise. But as soon as I talked about schools and universities and things that cost money, she was more like lecturing me saying, oh, but how are you going to pay for it? How are you ever Mm going to pay that back? And so that stuck with me, actually. And I know that today that the, it's something that I have at the back of, of my head Yeah. that I'm a little bit afraid of money actually. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. So what would you say to someone like me who oh, has that um, money story? How can you, is it, is it possible to change your mindset in that regards? 100%. I think um, I've always had this belief that, you know, money comes and goes. Mm-hmm. It like it like it just does money comes and goes and and it flows um as I've you know grown up I guess I figured out systems that work for me to help me manage my personal money better yeah because I do love to shop <laughs> <laughs> I love a good pair of shoes <laughs> so you know that like and for me personal budgeting is very different than than business budgeting as well yeah um I guess the, the only thing I would say around mindset is is that um you you can so for example I've always had this belief that no matter what money money will be fine if and when I don't have any it'll turn up from somewhere Mm -hmm. and it somehow always does but also at the same time because I have that belief I am constantly looking for opportunity and constantly doing Mm -hmm. things to make sure that I never run out right so it's not about saying um I'm going to go out and spend all my money on shopping because I could just sit back when I come home. And then at some point money will come into my account again. No, 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 no. It's, I I think the belief is once, like once you have the belief that you'll always have money Mm -hmm. and once you have the belief that um, yes, money comes and goes, but you'll always have enough for for what you want or or, or what you need. Unconsciously you've put it into action because you know that in order to, you believe there's always going to be money there. There's always has to be money there. Yeah. 
So for me, I I always have the belief that there'll be money there. So I'm always making sure that unconsciously making sure that that there is, whether that is going out and finding work, whether that is consulting for someone, whether that is raising capital for something, you always, you always unconsciously end up putting in the work. Hmm. And have you, um, have you ever used a coach or a mentor or something? Have, yep. So yeah. I have had numerous mentors. Um, yeah. I've had uh, de- de- definitely personal development um, grow, uh, coaches and growth coaches and, and things like that. Um, I particularly, uh, not so much, I've, I still have mentors now. I have two mentors at, at the moment um, for different aspects of, of business. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both men which is which is fine which is great um I would love to find a a female mentor um I just haven't been as lucky I guess to to connect with one that I really gelled with Mm. um but they're both very esteemed at at what they do in business um it wasn't so much me uh you know finding and and paying for for a mentor or anything like that they were people that I dealt with in business that I just said I, I really like the way that, that you operated and, and that you worked on, on this transaction. Um, I would love to learn from you. Is, is there a way that I can get you a coffee or, or shoot you an email? And they're now a couple of, of my closest friends. Um, and you don't necessarily have to ask someone to like be your mentor and check no. in and do this and do that. But it's definitely really great to have some trusted advisors that, that you can go to. Um, and people are, in, in my experience, everyone I've approached like that has been super receptive, really generous with, with their time, um, more than happy to sit down and, and have lunch and, and have a coffee and, and spend that time with you and, and get to know you and, and understand what, what you're facing and, and perhaps some of your issues or, or what you need to learn. And then have been incredibly um, helpful in, in helping implement it as well. And I've also had some some business coaches, particularly when I was younger, um, you know, in in my early twenties, and and you know, did um, well. I've I've done my MBA, but I you know paid for courses or, or went and did this coaching workshop and and things like that, which was just great for personal development um, and uh, increasing confidence and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's something that I have also in the recent years become more aware of, and actually mm-hmm. never really thought about this of you know reaching out for help or because one thing is to do film school or go do a course but reach out to someone that you for example could be somebody that you really admire or it can be somebody who is a professional mentor or coach obviously yeah um but reaching out for help like you say go for a coffee or ask some questions i think yeah uh, we're often a little bit afraid of asking for help Rejection. Yeah, or asking yeah. For, yeah yeah and they and we think oh they're not gonna want to help us they're too busy or they're gonna think i'm stupid or, mm-hmm. but when usually, in actual fact it, it's it's the opposite they love it yeah. they're like oh my god someone likes me yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes, you, you can take me to coffee and tell me how wonderful you think i am yeah. of course <laughs> you know <laughs> no no but you're absolutely right and it's funny because i i was just in um in another Zoom meeting a couple of days ago with a wonderful, she's a film uh, festival director and she's also a director herself. And we were talking about um, really how to do networking because it's such mm-hmm. a big thing. Um, and it's so important in almost all businesses to have a good network and, and to be constantly networking um, mm-hmm. and maintaining your contacts. And also yeah. we were talking about how do you write these cold emails? Like how do you write someone you've never talked to before and ask for their help or promote yourself or Mm -hmm. something that's really, it's hard to do because you know that most people are busy and they get a lot of emails. So, Mm -hmm. but the main thing was what we talked about was um, always, first of all, know about them. So know what they're about, yeah? And, and know their films, for example, if it's a film director or producer. Yeah. Um, and then compliment them and tell them what are the good things that you, you're, you're contacting, them, contacting them because you like them. Well, tell them that. Yeah. 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 Right? Exactly. Because that's something that usually, it speaks to all of us. We like to get compliments. And yeah. And you, yeah. So when somebody writes to you and say, hey, I just watched your last film and it was amazing. And I love this and this and this about your film. Yeah. Would you have a coffee with me? Because I would love to ask you 
whatever mm-hmm. questions. Yeah. Right. As opposed to, I'm going to write you and I'm going to just talk about me, 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 what I want, what I need, what I, can you do no. for me? Right. No, exactly. Exactly. And I think even um, doing that, that bit of extra, even if it's, so even from a, uh, an organization point of view, if it's a brand you want to work with, or if it's a, 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 a funding group that, that, that you're going to, um, doing some research on them and understanding who they've worked with in, in the past and, and things like that, A, helps you more informed about what they're looking for and, and you know, what, what they've done previously and why and gives you a place of power. But mm-hmm. also um, it's, it's complimentary for them and everyone likes reading an email going, oh, I like that bit of feedback. That's really nice. Yeah, and it, yeah. it means that they'll take the extra 30 seconds to read the rest of your email. Yeah. Whereas I'm sure that, you know, particularly in, in the film industry, people have yeah, a lot of emails on a daily basis. I know I get yeah. heaps and it's that, that one small thing that can make it stand out to someone. But also then, you know, like these are people that you do genuinely admire, you know, be, be, be authentic and, and mm-hmm. let them know that. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, I think here in Europe, or at least mm-hmm. my experience in Spain and perhaps even um, in Denmark, where I'm originally from, uh, is that we don't use that much uh, the concept of mentor and, and coach. It's something yeah. for me, for example, that was very American. Yeah. Actually, just, uh, yeah, it was during the pandemic. So 2020. I um, got myself involved with a Facebook group actually for filmmakers. And there was this wonderful woman uh, who started the the Facebook group. She's a Hollywood editor called Tina Imahera. And she's also a mentor. And she started Mm -hmm. this group to, you know, to reach out and help people. Mm -hmm. And that was when I first really got familiar with that whole concept of mentor and what a mentor can do for you. And it was just amazing. And it's just Sometimes it's just about that support and somebody telling you, mm-hmm. you know, you're on your, you're, you're on your you're right, on the right track. track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And keep going. Or have you thought about maybe just like little details pointing you in a direction or just telling you what you're doing is amazing. Keep going. Yeah. You know? And even just, just the connection with other like-minded people yeah. that are doing similar things or, or working in, in a similar space can be really powerful. You know, I, uh, and you never know when, um, you know, you might connect with them now, nothing might happen. It might be, you know, great support, but there might be something five years down the track. Yeah. I was having a conversation with someone the other day where they said, you know, you're, you're in finance, but it's nothing about money. It's about people and, and who you know and, and who you connect with. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that's so true because I'm, I'm not great at finance, but I'm good at people. Yeah. And I can connect with people and get to know people and in a really authentic, genuine way where, yeah. and because it is genuine, you know, I, I love meeting people and, and I love speaking to them and I, I love talking with them and understanding who they are, what they do and why. And, and I find that a genuinely fascinating conversation in itself. For me, I get to do that for work. Yeah. And then I get to find um, alignments where people that need money have, and people that have money and put them together and yeah. I get paid to do that. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's for me, it's, it's not about money. It's, it's about people. But having those connections, I might meet someone now and then I might not have anything for them. And then in a year's time, two years' time, five years' time, I'll meet someone with that right alignment and it mm. works. Yeah. Or, you know, I'll think, who do I know that does something in this space, you know, in 18 months' time and, and give them a call and see what they're up to and see if they're still doing that in that space and, and what have you. Yeah. So if, how, even, how those, would, even those mentor groups and things like that can be really great just for making those initial connections because you never know where they lead. Exactly. Yeah. And having that support network as well, uh, mm-hmm. people who motivate you or inspire you to keep going. Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. I, I imagine that that happens to you as well, that you work um, alone sometimes and, and can even feel alone in your work. Right? Very much so, yeah. 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 I've definitely had one or two phone calls, particularly while traveling during COVID. I've definitely had one or two phone calls with my mum where, you know, I get off the phone call and it's three elderly white gentlemen that are all on it with me that are all very much in a puff and puff and very, you know, putting their foot down. I get off the phone call and I call my mum and I either have a whinge or have a cry and then just want to go back to bed. 
yeah. definitely have those days. Yeah. Um, and you're right, having that support of someone that uh, understands because they've done it before or they're in the same place or, or they're in the same space and doing the same sort of things as you helps you to get up and keep going. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's very powerful. And I think, I mean, I, I feel almost... Um, sad for myself that I didn't realize this earlier in my career because I have definitely struggled with I would say loneliness not because I didn't have family or friends around me but loneliness in my career path yeah and thought that I had to do it all by myself you know I was mm -hmm. so sort of narrow-minded and just thinking that oh I have to do it I have to do it on my own I have to you know mm -hmm. and when actually now and my couple of I would say the last five years again it's it's probably mm -hmm. when I've started to really realize how powerful it is to be involved in organizations mm -hmm. and groups and masterminds and having mentors reaching out telling people that you need help and that you're willing to help them as well and so yeah. have all this you know collaboration going on instead of you know thinking it's just me it's just me I have to do it on my own I have to deal with this on my own no 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 open open your your view to to the entire world and, mm -hmm. and ask for help yeah um, exactly yeah that's very that's very powerful and I think especially for women that's powerful because mm -hmm. and I say this especially for women because I think men for many 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 years centuries and centuries they have enjoyed a certain brotherhood if you mm -hmm. know what I mean you know mm -hmm. it's like uh okay so the women were at home cooking cleaning uh doing whatever they needed to do at home and the men were out in the world mm -hmm. and they would go out afterwards for drinks mm -hmm. they would go play golf they would do this and that all these activities that they would do together and all of a sudden when women started entering the um the work market um mm -hmm they wouldn't have the same uh, habits and they might not be able to talk about golf or football or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, oh, let's all go to a strip club and have a drink after work. And the woman would be, <laughs> okay, well, maybe that's not exactly what I feel like doing. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you, I think for many, many years, women have been kept out of this kind of brotherhood network that the men mm -hmm. have enjoyed where they could even be closing deals after yeah. work you know, because they were out drinking together, they were out doing things together. Yeah. And so I think for women, it's important to realize that um, you can do the same and you can do it with women. You can obviously also do this uh, with men. But for me, I have really found um, help and support in female organizations that were uh, very um, focused on promoting women in, in the film industry. Mm -hmm. um, it has helped me and supported me in so many ways. Um, mm -hmm. and giving me more confidence to go out and it doesn't mean that I don't work with men because I do I, I you know I actually prefer to be uh, mm -hmm. on a set with 50% men 50% women more or less because mm -hmm. I think it's great to collaborate um, yeah I also train martial arts and I have a martial arts school with my husband and so I'm very very used to <laughs> being yeah. around men because let me tell you there are definitely more men in those classes than there are women and and I very much enjoy it so yeah I have absolutely no problem I'm just I'm talking about how you as a woman can empower yourself and get motivation inspiration mm -hmm. and support mm -hmm. in your career yeah right Sorry, I that think was long. One of the, no, that, that, that's okay. One of the biggest lessons I've learned, and this has really only been recently since I started my own mm. business was, and I think because I had always worked um, in a really systematic role where it was, you know, whether it was I was an intern and there was people that I would report to and I would have to do this work by myself and then, you know, report to them and, and, and things like that. Um, I now am more and more bringing in partners to do things and have a number of business partners for different projects all around the world because I know what I am really really good at mm. and I know my strengths and I know maybe not what my weakness there may maybe not weaknesses but I know someone is probably better at that than I am yeah and I know the person that's better at it than me so why not ask them to collaborate with me on it I've mm. it's really only been you know the last 
two years, 18 months that I've really, I've, I always used to do everything on my own um, and was very independent. But also, as you said before, I did feel lonely at times. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've more and more um, adopted this way of really collaboratively working, um, which has been wonderful. You know, I've, I've had some incredible opportunities and, and met some incredible people um, and done some fantastic work. And so for me, it's until, because I didn't know any different, if that makes sense, I was always mm. so used to kind of doing, here's my work done. Yeah. I had never really, um, I guess, you know, been really collaborative on, on something. Yeah. Um, in, in a really, uh, how do I explain? I guess in a really like holistic way where I really identified, well, look, usually I would just put the work in and, and get stuff done. But mm. it really took me looking at myself going, identifying what I needed yeah. um, and to, and then to accept that and actually to go out and ask for someone to, to partner with me on it um, because I could see that that their skills or, or what have you was, was going to be beneficial. And almost getting myself out of the way and going, you know what, you actually don't need to do all the work yourself. No. You're really good at this. Find someone that's really good at that and then you can go out and just do that and they can go out and do that and everyone's happy. Yeah. You know, rather than, so, yeah, so I think um, collaborative work is is definitely becoming more and is, is a fantastic tool as well to get that support, to um, expand your network, to um, be exposed to different types of work as, as well um is is really fantastic and it, it's another way that you almost can be mentored in in, in a way mm. um particularly if if you look for a person with particular skills um yeah. they're going to be very good in in their area you, you'll learn a lot from them as well that's yeah. what i found anyway yeah so definitely maybe a recommendation for uh young women or young people in general who's starting yeah. out like go out find those communities networks support groups mm -hmm. And even, uh, you know, maybe find yourself a mentor uh, or more uh, people that you look up to that you can ask for help or, mm -hmm. you know, ask them to, yeah, to, to support you. And yeah, and I think the advice. other bit of advice that I would have as well is um, just, just go for it. You know, um, I think often people are always quite scared of, oh, but what if I look like an idiot or, and I've certainly been like that as well but I've never gotten anywhere by just standing still. Yeah. You know, um, and by not doing anything. I used to um, have uh, have this saying, particularly when I was younger um, and was trying to get into different businesses or seize different opportunities, it would just be like, just have no shame and just ask. But I actually think shame is, is perhaps the wrong word. I think it's just having guts mm. and just doing it unapologetically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then being open to, to whatever you receive, whether the feedback is good or bad, because you're going to learn and you're going to grow and it's going to help you with the next person you go to Yeah. at the absolute worst case scenario. Yeah. You know, and I think you have to go through a, a period of time when you're younger, where you do mistakes, you know, and yeah. when you do things that are look silly or stupid and you have, oh, you to do have that rejection because it builds resilience yeah. and all sorts of things. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's really the best way to learn things. I mean, it is to commit those mistakes yourself and say, hey, okay, uh, I should have done this differently or I will definitely, yeah. next time I do this, I'm, I'm going to do it in a different way. It's the best yeah. way to learn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Any other like recommendations or tips for, I would say, especially maybe uh, women who wants to either do a startup or who wants to do mm -hmm. work similar to yours? Like, um, mm -hmm in the um, finance world? Yeah, for sure. Um, find, definitely find other women mm -hmm. um, because they've all, they're all very generous with, with their time and, and all have an understanding of, of what the industry is like. And then also find some men um, that, that can mentor you or are allies um, because I think uh, there's something really powerful in having uh, both male and female champions of, of yeah. in your organization or, or what they do. And, and you definitely need um, an ally or, or someone who understands and maybe who is part of the boys club, hmm. but also um, respects you, supports you, wants you to do well and wants to make change as well. Cause you need both sides. 
Yeah. Um, I would say uh, to be aware but don't be um, jaded perhaps of maybe what the industry has been like before mm. because not everywhere is like that and you could potentially cut yourself off from some really great opportunities if if you think that it's only one one way mm-hmm. and then just continue just continue to work um continue to grow always be open to learning and and uh, and growth um and then whenever i get really um stressed by a situation i write down all the things that are stressing me out i cross out or I make a list of all the things that I can do to change it and I start to put it Mm -hmm. into action. And then that always seems to make change as well. Yeah. Wow, that's very good advice. And it's also, if you make a list like that, um, you can also look at the things that you actually can't change. Yeah, And then exactly. And then you don't have to worry about those because you can't do anything about it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very powerful because I know I sometimes have problems with that. I get very <laughs> upset about things and then I forget that mm-hmm. I'm not actually, you know, there might be certain things that I'm actually not able to, to change. Yeah. So yeah. why even bother getting upset or spending your mm-hmm. energy and being angry? You might as well forget about that, move on to something mm-hmm. that you can change and then dive yeah. into that. Exactly. And the only other piece of advice that I would have is that it's so easy, particularly, you know, with people working from home because of COVID and, Mm. or, you know, or things like that, it's so easy to get burnt out um, is just to have things that you like one thing that you do for yourself every day. Yeah. Yeah. Whether that is. So for example, today, I'm going to find a nice restaurant and take myself to lunch. Oh, nice. Yeah. (laughs) And and that's like my one thing that I'm going to do for for, for myself today, or it might be watching half an hour of something on Netflix or yeah. going for a walk, whatever. But yeah. that, that would be another piece of advice, particularly um, like I travel a lot for work. Um, and uh, if I don't do something for myself once a day, um, it can feel endless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Yeah, because uh, I was going to say do, it, your work sounds like, it sounds like you're almost always at work. Is it almost yeah. like a 24-hour thing for you? <laughs> yeah, and particularly because, you know, well, Australia's on one time zone, Europe's yeah. on another, the US is on another time zone. Um, wow. So I'm kind of constantly working. You're, you're, you're right. Um, I uh, have made good use of the Do Not Disturb feature on my phone to make sure that I can get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's really diary management Um and just un- understand and you know as as you do it more and more you you learn how much work you can take on and, and how much you can't mm. um and that's just sort of part of the, the 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 process I guess yeah yeah no but that's that's very important and I think um we tend to in many industries actually go more and more and more than the set hours that we have that we're supposed to work mm-hmm. but then we don't really leave after um well, when we stop working, uh, we don't really leave our work. We continue because then maybe we go on social media. Then maybe mm-hmm. we have a networking meeting or, we, you know, we do stuff yeah. also in the weekend. Um, now, I don't see this interview as such a, a work thing. It's really yeah, a pleasure okay. doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's still, you know, we're doing it on a Sunday. So, um and it is something that you're activating your brain and you, I've been oh. preparing this and you thinking about questions. And so, mm-hmm. so you really like, you have to be careful not to be constantly in a work mode. Like you say, do one thing at least once a day for yourself. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And I know so then people uh, might be meditating or they do mm-hmm. sports or they, and it's not really, um, you don't have to do, one thing all the time it can be different obviously like you yeah, say exactly. now you go out to to have lunch it's just important yeah. to have that one thing that you enjoy yeah you know for example if, if I wasn't traveling at the moment and if I was at home it would most likely be I would put on some music and cook myself lunch and yeah. like not answer my phone for 20 minutes half an hour while I cook yeah. like and just kind of dance around the kitchen and have some fun yeah. you know it can be like something really small or it can be something yeah. big and it can be whatever you'd like but I think just doing one thing for yourself each day is really 
really yeah. good. It's good for you as well. It's nice yeah. to do things for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, me. I think no, it's, thank uh, you. it's been lovely. Yeah, it really has. I always enjoy talking to you. Um, I hope it's not going to be the last time. Well, how long are you in, in Barcelona? You don't know or you have a set date? When you're no, so back? I think um, I think I'm only here. It's Sunday today. I'm in, uh, I think I'm going to Madrid Tuesday. I go to Glasgow Wednesday. I'm in Zurich after that, then Portugal, then wow. the US. Yeah. <laughs> how do you even remember your calendar? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, only a few more days. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, um, Mia, I also wanted to ask you, do you have anything maybe, um, I mean, we will we will put in your LinkedIn and ways for yeah, people right. to contact yeah, you, but do you have yeah, the website of your company, yep. for example? Um, yep, so it's zcvcap.com is, is the website and you can um, email me from there Perfect. or um, on Instagram at Mia Vass, V-A-S-S, um, is, is a good way as well. Amazing. LinkedIn, yeah. Great. So people can get in contact with you with you if they want to do business or they felt inspired by you or just yes, want to say hi. Cool. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm always more than happy to hear, hear from people. That's great. Thank you so much, Mia. It's really been a, a pleasure. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye.